everybody. Good afternoon, everyone. All right, is that everybody? So. All, right. All right, hello, everybody. Hello, hello. My name is Lauren. I am the um, communications coordinator for the MD Ambassador Program here at Wayne. I'm an M2 student. And we're gonna go ahead and do some introductions just so you guys know who you're talking to and then we can go ahead and get started. So we have two people with admissions here with us today to answer any questions. Can you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves, Rachel? Sure, I am Rachel Charno. I work in the admissions office as the application manager. Um, if any of you have ever emailed MD Admissions, it's likely that you may have received a response from me. Um, I am from the west side of the state, but moved to Detroit about six years ago and have been at Wayne since 2019. And Dawn is here as well with us today. Dawn. Hi. Hi, my name is Dawn Yejo. I am from the Office of Admissions. I've been at Wayne State in the Office of Admissions for 30 years. So I can answer a lot of your questions, but basically we're here to let you know what our students think of the School of Medicine and why they chose us. All right, excellent. So like I said, my name is Lauren. I am a second year at Wayne. I hail from Livonia, Michigan. So this is my home state. It's a big factor in why I chose Wayne because it's nearby. Um, I am a communications coordinator for the MD Ambassadors. I'm a peer mentor for oh, M1 so students, and I'm involved in a lot of research online. through the DMC and through Wayne, so I can answer a lot of questions there. And then we have some of our other um, ambassadors with us here today, so let's start with Jenna. Hi, everybody, and welcome. My name is Jenna. Um, I'm an MD-PhD student, so um, I'm at Wayne for a total of eight years. I'm going on my sixth year. I started in 2017, so um, I know a lot about Wayne and a lot about Detroit, and um, I'm happy to tell you guys like why I love it so much. Um, I also, I think, most significantly have been on our student senate for the last five years, so um, you know, a lot of questions about like leadership or curriculum, um, I can answer those as well. Excellent. Andrew. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Andrew. I'm also an M2 student here. Um, I also hail from Rochester, Michigan. So again, um, in state as well. And then just with Wayne, um, I do things such as like medical education research uh, and electives. So things like that. And then also um, I'm part of MD ambassador as well. All right, excellent. Bridget. Hi everyone, my name is Bridget. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, which is only two and a half hours away, uh, but I am out of state. Um, I am a M2 student as well, and I'm involved in street medicine Detroit. I'm also involved in basic science research. All right, and Elise. Hi everyone, my name is Elise. I'm from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, I am involved in a few things. I'm a house coordinator. Um, which I'm sure we'll talk about later. I'm also in Senate um, and I'm on the board for the Medical Student Garden and the Acapella Group and the Latino Medical Student Association. All right, excellent. So you see we have an excellent panel for you guys here today. So this is gonna be a really kind of chill question and answer session. So if you guys can please use the raise your hand function. If you'd like to ask a question out loud, we'll call on you. You can ask your question to our panel here and we can answer it. If you would like, you can also put it in the chat um, to everyone or you can direct message one of our panelists and we can read through them that way. And we also have quite a big list of submitted questions that we can also resort to as well. So would anyone like to start us off with a question for our panelists? All right, right off the bat, we have Pierce. Hello, thank you for doing this. This is uh, really great. And uh, so my question is, what's your uh, favorite part about living in Detroit and the Wayne State curriculum as a whole? 
I can add that. I live in Detroit. Um, I live on the like uh, east side of Detroit, um, but I've lived in Detroit for quite a few years now. Um, it's a really, really wonderful city. It's kind of sprawling. So you get like, I feel like a lot of different things, like no matter where you go, um, there's a lot of different villages of Detroit. There is really great food if you're into food. Um, there's also great music and art in Detroit. Um, so I think like no matter what your hobbies are, you can find a lot of things here. Um, we have like a lot of music festivals. Um, Detroit is home to like techno music, like the start of techno music, but also like a lot of like Motown, like jazz music. Um, I live about 0.5 miles away from Belle Isle, which is like my favorite spot in Detroit. Um, it's a very big state park that's actually an island in the middle of the Detroit River um, with a lot of like green space and like recreational space. It's great for running and biking, um, bird watching if you're into like nature. Um, so I think that like when people think of Detroit, they don't understand that it's actually got a lot of green space. I think we have over 100 or 300 city parks. Um, so yeah, those are the few things that I really love about living in Detroit. Um, it's actually becoming more and more bikeable too. So if like you have like a preference for biking, um, you can get around that way, which is quite nice. Thank you. Yeah, do any other panelists like live in Detroit or want to say things that they love about Detroit? Um, I live in Detroit. I live in Brush Park, which is a little closer to the school. Um, it's a neighborhood between Midtown, which is where the school is, and downtown, which is a really great location. Um, I'll just add we have great sports teams here. Um, we also have Eastern Market, which is close to the school, which is a really cool neighborhood that has restaurants. And every weekend they also have, or at least in the summer, they also have um, a farmer's market, which is really cool. Uh, and I think you also asked about the curriculum. Uh, one thing that I really love about our curriculum, I'm a second year, but um, so far I love that we have a uh, kind of accelerated preclinical curriculum. So even though I've uh, been in medical school since last July, we are actually finishing up our second year, which will end this December, um, which I really like because we have a lot of opportunity in the third year and fourth year which are longer than uh, some other schools, we have a lot of opportunity to be in the clinical setting, uh, which gives us a lot of hands-on experience. And I'll add to Bridget's comments about the curriculum. So I actually had a, an older version of the curriculum when I was an M1 and 2 student. Some really positive changes have also been that like, especially for health and wellness, they've incorporated um, like weeks off following um, like an a series of exam blocks. So you guys get built-in time off, um, you know, kind of, during, during the curriculum, which I think is like very, very important for health and wellness. And students have really um, like positively reviewed how much that has helped in that area. Um, and then the other thing is, is like, again, to her point of like the accelerated preclinical um, students in third and fourth year have really found that having all of their core clerkships done in third year, kind of like ahead of schedule allows them to take electives um, and the things they want to go into residency for a lot earlier than all other schools, which means they get those letters of recommendation and they're kind of going to residency um, on a stronger foot, which has been um, very impactful for, I think, students in the clerkship years as well. All right, excellent. So since we have so many questions coming in, I think we're going to have to move on from this question. So next up we have Brayden. Hi everyone, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. I was wanting to know, or I'd like to learn more about the opportunities there at Wayne to get educated on stigmatized health groups, underserved health groups, such as LGBTQ plus health, and whether there are certificate programs or different clinical opportunities, et cetera. I can take this one. So we have um, a class that's incorporated into our curriculum called P4. Um, it stands for, okay, I can do this, professionalism, physicians, population, and there's another one. And it basically covers underserved healthcare. Like, and each each class is gonna focus on a different underserved population. And like, we'll talk about the experiences of patients in that population and like how we as physicians can improve healthcare for that population. We also have clinics at Wayne. I think one of the coolest things about Wayne is our millions of student run clinics. And we do have like an LGBTQ based clinic so like it's a clinic that is in um, an area of Detroit that brings in a lot of LGBTQ patients um, and then we also have like 
in Amigos Medicos clinics, both for like the Latino population. We have the street medicine, which is for the homeless population. You know, so there's there's a lot of different clinical experiences that you can get at Wade before you even start third and fourth year that are with um, underserved populations. And you can like narrow it down and be specific with it if you want, so. And um, I'll quickly add to that, like, um, so like I was in charge of like surveying our student body recently and um, by and far, like our students um, when leaving like the medical education curriculum feel very strongly that they were well-trained and like cultural competencies and taking care of like vulnerable populations and that the curriculum pre prepares them really well for that. And so that was one of our strengths for sure. All right, anything so else? To, yeah, no problem. Anything else our panelists wanna add? Are you good? All right. So next we have Anan Ananya and Anaya. Ananya, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, so I just kind of uh, following off of Braden's question, I did have a few questions regarding the extracurriculars at Wayne and how students are able to kind of create a balance between academics and continuing with applying that knowledge in a more extracurricular setting. Yeah, I guess. Um, so I'm part of, uh, they, Wayne does offer um, electives. And so one of the electives I'm in is the uh, medical education elective. And so uh, the main priority of the school is, is of course, is, you know, getting the core uh, preclinical curriculum down. And you usually don't start uh, extracurriculars until probably like after your first month of school, because the first month of school in med school is first you have to learn how to kind of study again or like how to study you know the huge amount of information that you get and so most people don't usually start extracurriculars right off the bat they usually take like a month to first learn how to study and then kind of once you get that work balance set up then you can kind of start putting more things into your schedule and that's kind of like when they when when you start offering extracurriculars such as um, like medical education electives um, there's also just research electives there's a public action committee elective um, there's um, I, and there's like just a bunch of other electives. And then also there's also student run clubs and orgs such as street med and all the student running clinics. And there's also interest groups for like, if you're interested in a certain like specialty. So I'm also um, an, um, a board member of the cardiology interest group. So we do things such as uh, we do meetings with residents and uh, cardiologists over at the VA and we'll go talk to them about their specialty and they can go give panels to us. And so there is um, definitely as much electric, um, extracurricular activity as you want, but uh, it's usually you first get, like make your uh, study schedule first, and then you can put in as much as you want or as little as you want. It's all up to you and everything. It just uh, builds up to what you uh, want to be. Any other panelists have anything to add? I think Andrew kind of hit it right on the head. I definitely agree there that you kind of build up. I didn't start adding things into my own schedule to like halfway through the second block, which for us is like three or four months in. So you really have to kind of nail down your studying first before you start taking on other responsibilities and your schedule kind of opens up, but there are so many opportunities to choose from once you get to that point. So next up we have Mary. Um, hi, thank you for that. Um, I kind of want to expand on that, and I'm really interested in doing research. And uh, a few of the panelists mentioned different kinds of research. There was medical education and um, basic sciences. And um, I'm currently teaching high school biology right now, so I'd be really interested in continuing on the education track. So um, I'd like to hear a little bit more about the medical education research and just what general research options are available as well. Yeah. I can take this one. Um, so yeah, specifically for like medical education, we actually have like a very robust, I think, program here at Wayne State. So you can do like the medical education um, elective, um, which kind of like supports that during the first and second year. Um, there's also like opportunities to get involved in some of our Senate um, subcommittees, such as the curriculum committee, which actually sits on our um, like official curriculum committee um, to kind of, you know, guide and, and change our curriculum here at the medical school. Um, other like avenues for research, we actually started 
we're now in our fourth year of a medical education research and innovation conference that's held at Wayne State, in which case like a lot of our medical students, um, either through like participation in the elective or even just doing their own kind of like research um, or like innovation in their student organizations, present research. Um, and so, you know, that's also like participated by faculty and residents. So it's a really great experience. Um, additionally, they've built into like the fourth year of the curriculum for medical students that there's like peer to peer mentorship and actually teaching. So we um, purposely integrate teaching into it for our fourth year students, since um, whether you want to go into medical education very purposely or not, um, kind of medical education is a part of being a resident and teaching other medical students, you know, being an attending later on. So um, there's also that opportunity in the fourth year to engage with, you know, doing that. And then um, also, I don't know if any of the, like, the M2 students are currently like on this program, like do this, but we have like learning coaches and like tutors um, for like M2 students to tutor M1 students and, you know, things like anatomy or, you know, course specific stuff and also in clinical skills. So there's a lot of ways, like if you do enjoy mentorship and teaching to engage with that throughout all of the, the years. Um, and then to like the research aspect of it. Um, so there's opportunities to do things like the research elective during your first and second year, um, which teaches you kind of how to do research, but also helps pair you up with a research mentor. Um, and then there's also a lot of time in your fourth year to do research electives and take time um, to actually do dedicated research. And then we also have a scholarly concentrations program, which I know a lot of people ask questions about. Um, so that was started as a pilot program a couple of years ago, and they're actively working on expanding it. But we do get um, it just depends on which concentration you're in, how many students they take. Um, but that pairs you up with like a mentor to work on a longitudinal project um, for like either one to three years of medical school, depending on when you start it. Um, so, yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunities kind of depending on which way you want to go with research and, and education to get involved. Yeah, and even all of those opportunities are out there to help you get into research, find mentors, it makes it a lot easier. And there's also just the old school way, if you have a field you're very interested in, you can cold email professors, people that work in the hospitals. That's how I ended up getting my research. I knew I wanted to go into pathology, I emailed some people in the pathology department, at the DMC, got hooked up with people who are actively doing research with med students, bam. Now I do research with them. They told me about other people that do dermatopathology research. Now I'm doing that. So really it's, there's so many ways to get into it. And there's so many different types of research. You can find anything you're interested in really. It's really exciting. And most, if not all of the um, PIs and doctors understand your rigorous schedule. So they'll be very compensating towards how much work you're doing each week, even if you're trying to do it in M1 or M2 or M4. So it's very, it's, the flow is very great for research in medical school. All right, so moving on to the next question, is it Sindhu? Yeah, um, hi everyone. Um, uh, my question that I had was when you're coming into Wayne State, like I'm sure you had like, oh, I wanna do this, I wanna do that. So when you started doing medical school, like what was a niche like extracurricular that you thought you wouldn't like, but you ended up loving? I was just wondering like what the different, um, I guess not necessarily extracurriculars, but like, I guess how you thwarted your expectations coming in to like realistically, like going through the extracurriculars at the medical school. Uh, I can answer this. So I hope I'm answering your question correctly. Um, so one thing that I didn't know much about before coming into medical school is like quality safety, or I'm sorry, quality improvement and patient safety, which is a big focus of a lot of different areas of medicine, um, medical administration in general. Uh, so that is an area that I've become involved in. We have a healthcare improvement student org here. We also integrate patient safety and quality improvement into the curriculum. So uh, there's a day as M1s where you learn about um, what it's like to recognize a problem, brainstorm ideas um, at more of a systems level. Uh, it's also a topic that uh, is tested on the boards and is relevant for when you are practicing medicine. Um, so that's one extracurricular that I became involved in that I had no idea I would um, ever 
you know, become involved in. But I think that's a great thing about Wayne. There's so many different things here. We have a wilderness and medicine club. We have a fit kids club. Um, we have a club that goes down to the river walk and um, takes blood pressure from people. We have so many different things. Um, we have a club who makes um, mats out of um, plastic bags to give to people who might be sleeping on the streets. Um, so we just have so many different opportunities here, which I love um, and everyone's passionate about niche things. Uh, so yeah, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, I think too, like it's kind of overwhelming because there's a lot of options um, and you like are passionate about a lot of things. So you're going to want to jump in and do a lot of things. Um, and so I usually tell students like choose like one or two additional extracurriculars and um, kind of like see where that takes you. And um, like we said, just like, you know, being a medical student first is really important, but then kind of like, um, you know, maybe choose like one or two things um, and like talk to like other other older students too for like some peer to peer mentorship on maybe like how to narrow it down on like what's what's going to be the most fulfilling to you. I also think too, just like do some do extracurriculars that like, you know, feel rewarding and like also give you energy. Um, medical school can be very challenging. And so it's really nice to like if you're, you know, you really love working with kids to do some of our kid based activities um, where you come out of that and be like, wow, that was a really great break. I, I really enjoyed that. So that's kind of how um, I chose my extracurriculars and like what I would choose to participate in, if that's kind of what you're asking. Yeah, I also like when you when you go into M1 year, you have time to like check out the different like volunteer activities and like events that all the clubs are running and just kind of see like what makes you happy. For me, like I joined the medical student garden when we did like e-board applications, but I had never gardened before in my life. I just like showed up at the garden one day and it made me so happy. It was so fun. Just so good to be outside and like be with people. And it was just a great break on my Saturday. And I was like, this is something I will do. And like, now we, we go and we teach about like healthy eating, right? Um, urban gardening is like a really big thing because the dirt is lead ridden. And so a lot of people need to learn how to garden in an urban environment. So we do a lot of teaching with that too. And it's just like, it's cool. You know, and it's never something that I knew that I would want to address before, but there's so much going on here. And like, when you're an M1, you want to check it all out and you'll find things that are really like fitting for you and, and your passions. All right. So next up we have Selena. Hello, I have two questions. One of them is, when you guys were coming in as an M1, was there anything you struggled with or anything you had to adjust to? And additionally, besides not adding on a bunch of extracurriculars at the start, what would you recommend for prospective or incoming students at Wayne? Um, I can go. Um, I think one of the biggest things was a study schedule, like learning how to study um coming in because um I came in straight from undergrad so like I kind of like kept what I thought was like what I did successful in undergrad uh first studying and um it turned out you know I I, I did the first you know week of lectures and it was you no know, the amount of information that you kind of get and you have to like kind of memorize is just so much more than you ever had to with any other type of class I've experienced and so for me, it was definitely trying to get a study schedule because before, like maybe like maybe like on a Friday, I would you know look up at my class schedule. But then like you know going to med school, it's like every day you kind of have to do a little bit um, at a time. And if you don't, you're just gonna get so overwhelmed that you're gonna like lose any type of healthy lifestyle you ever tried to live. So I think that was the biggest thing that, that kind of hit me was I kind of have to be more on on top of it because also Wayne does an asynchronous curriculum which I really like because it makes you kind of like in charge of when you want to do your like classes. So like they will give you the lectures for the day um, on a video format. Also, they'll give you the notes and they'll give you the lecture slides on that day. And they'll give you like three to four lectures to do per day. Um, and so it's on you when you want to do, decide to do those lectures, when you want to decide to um, do those notes. And so if you're a morning person, you can do them in the morning. If you're a night person, you can do them at night. You know, if you, uh, if you want if you like doing them, you know, uh, all together, if you want to do like, you know, if you want to do 12 lectures in a day, you can't, I don't recommend it, but you know, it's something that's for you. So that was a, um, it was a big thing is like, you become so much more like your own boss in terms of like, you have to know, set your priorities of what you have to get done uh, in a week. 
I think something that I use the transition or that like I would like encourage you guys to do too is just like you know um study study with friends and like you know make it like it's like easy to like study by yourself a lot um especially I feel like uh coming out of COVID it's kind of like our our normal but um work within like your anatomy group or like your learning communities or like you know find your group of people and kind of study with them because um it's hard to study all day but if like you're studying with friends that makes it a lot easier and like breaks it up a lot too so I think like you know kind of really dig into like your community um and like get close to like your friends while you're studying too and that makes it a much more enjoyable time. All right, next up we have, is it Lulia? It's Yulia. Um, so I just had a, um, I was wondering what sort of like health policy, health advocacy type of opportunities you guys have found in medical school and kind of how that's benefited um, your medical school education. So there's um there's like a um, policy and advocacy elective group, and you can also do a scholarly concentration in that. Um, and actually, um, Wayne and like Wayne State through especially like our AMA group, our student organization is our students are one of the biggest um like leaders in writing re resolutions to kind of like change policy, um, not only here in the state of Michigan or like in within our county, but also kind of nationwide. So we're very um have like a very good reputation for writing resolutions. And getting very involved with like medical policy. Um, I think off the top of my head, I have friends who've like wrote policy that was accepted on um, sex education in Michigan, um, providing sunblock to homeless populations, um, having different uh, sanitation aids throughout the um, the state or the the community, um, having earplugs at all like places for for prevent hearing loss I mean just really uh, it goes far and wide so I would think I think that like changing policy and having policy and advocacy is a big part of like Wayne State and if that's something you're passionate about you can do it very officially through like our elective and like scholarly concentration but you can also just kind of be a part of a team that helps um, like write a policy on something that you're you're passionate about which is really cool All right. Uh, I can also add, uh, my roommate's really involved in um, the political sphere of things. Um, she She's involved in a group called SciPol Sci um, that actually brings together not only people from the School of Medicine, but also um, Wayne State University as a whole. She's been able to go to DC and speak with uh, congressmen and women. And um, she also does research, uh, health policy research at Henry Ford. So I think there's so many uh, just to echo what Jenna said, there's so many different ways to get involved here, Wayne. Um, I was also told by like other students um, that um, way back when Wayne State medical students were um, responsible for creating policy to prohibit smoking on airplanes. So it's a, it's a fun fact. Yes, us warriors have a big impact. You'll see it more and more. All right. Next up, we have Clarissa. Hi, so my question um, was going based off of what was discussed earlier in terms of creating small groups to help you study as well. And I know Elise, you mentioned in the chat that there are small group sessions. So I was wondering if you guys if you all can talk a little bit more about your experience with sort of that team-based kind of learning environment. Yeah, so we have, um around 300 students in each class of, of Wayne Med students. And you're you're separated into houses. So they're like labeled by colors. So they'll be like red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, gray, brown. And um, in your small groups, there's like around 30 people. And then within that, you're put in groups of six. So during your M1 year, that group of six is who you'll do anatomy lab with, histology lab with, um, P4 with, like I said, is like the um, social health class that we have. Um, and so it's with that group of six that you do a lot of your small groups with. Um, in my experience, I loved the small group sessions that we have at Wayne. I think that having asynchronous lecture and then being able to come in and like talk through the material with your classmates and like there's always a professor in the room too. So you're usually in a room with like a few other groups and then you'll have one professor there walking around um it was a really helpful way to like learn the material and even even if you're behind and you haven't learned the material yet like your group mates got you and you can just all show up and um 
try to piece the puzzle pieces together. Um, so for me, it was really helpful. It definitely made the big school smaller. Um, and I made really good friends in my learning community um, now called houses. You guys will see them as houses, but for us, that's like a new, new word change. But um, in my house, I I'm in the yellow house and I made a lot of really good friends in that house because I just saw them so consistently. Um, and they're still very friendly faces for me to see in the hallway. So does that answer your question? Yeah, I would agree with everything Elise said. Thank you all. That was very helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my anatomy table are still some of my best friends. It's been like over a year now and we still try to hang out every single week and study together. So you truly get close with your class that way. It's awesome. All right, Bailey. Hi, so my, can you hear me okay, by the way, just because I'm okay, perfect, thank you. So um, the previous question kind of actually answered my question. I'm Canadian, so I was wondering how you do find like your sense of community and make friends because like it is such a large class. So the hoses definitely helped answer that question. Um, another question I did have about the curriculum um, between different schools, I've seen like different things. And what I really liked about Wayne State is that on the website so that you do like the human, sorry, the healthy for the first year. And then in M2, you do the unhealthy. Did like, how was that type of learning experience? Um, because I know like there's so much content and when you're like doing it after a year, I'm just wondering, cause I've seen mostly where it's like you focus on a block and then you move on. So I kind of like how it's like continuous. So I was just wondering how you found your experience with that. Um. Yeah, I can go. Um, yeah, I really liked uh, it so far because, like, right, that's where we're in. Where I'm at, as an N2, that's kind of like we're in the unhealthy section right now. Um, and it's really good. I like it because a lot of the time, it's um, a lot of time you kind of forget what's happened the past year. But, you know, because we have step in about three months. No, I'm sorry. Uh, in like March and uh, February slash January of next year, we start our step one exams. And so that's kind of a, you know, a big thing. And so it's really good because by doing this unhealthy stuff now this second year, it's really good review of all the first year stuff of like the healthy system, because in order to understand the unhealthy, you always ha you have to review the healthy first. And so um, we just had like our exam on like uh, the GI unit and stuff. And that was really good review of all the stuff that we covered in the first year, um, because then it just reinforced it. And then we got, and then we had to do a little extra. So I feel like pretty well prepared now of like all keeping up with the stuff from our first year as well. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't even think about Steph. So um, that is very, thank you yeah. for that. <laughs> I was gonna say, I think it was really helpful, like going into step two or step one um, as well. <laughs> and uh, having just reviewed like in a shorter period of time, all of your pathology rather than like spreading it out throughout two years and like learning like some of your pathology early on. Um, it's, I think it's very helpful in terms of studying for step one. And sorry, just like one follow up question that I think I forgot to mention before, just for based on like because the class is so large and you mentioned the houses, are there other opportunities to get to know your classmates like if you're coming, let's say, like from out of state or like from if it was from Canada um, to meet people. Yeah, so kind of like how we were talking about clubs and everything earlier, although a lot of them are volunteer based. We also have so, so many like interest group clubs. And I think those are excellent ways, especially for people who are out of state, out of country, et cetera, to kind of find their people and their friend group. Like we have medical movie watching groups. I just joined uh, the ice hockey group at Wayne, which I never thought would exist, but I guess it does. And we've been playing hockey every Sunday. Um, there are anime groups, there are video game groups, there are literally anything you can think of med in motion as a fitness group and they run together and do yoga Pilates whatever there are so many different groups and that would I'd say is one of the best ways you can find your people because you're all interested in the same thing and you're all in medicine together so even though you're trying to escape the studying you can also talk about that stuff with them create connections and honestly there are so many Canadians here so I do not doubt you will find other people applying or in the school that are same exact background as you like someone in my anatomy group is Canadian so it's it's super common and it's not hard to find people to hang out with and be friends with even if you already know people here because there are some people that come from Wayne undergrad they come in with friends you can still make more friends 
it's super easy. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. And like coming from the um, like student senate side um, now to like also coming out of COVID, um, like there's a lot of like efforts to like organize um, like social events. Um, so your class senate will organize um, like get togethers after every exam. We call them peps or post exam parties. Um, there's also like a lot of ways that the learning, um, I'm sorry, wait, uh, the houses, <laughs> learning communities, um, put together a lot of social events, like going to a Tigers game, going to Pistons games, Red Wing games, doing X rolling, bowling, um, going to see art shows for, you know, people who don't do sports things like me. Um, so there's like a lot of opportunities to engage in a lot of different ways. We also, as student senate, put together, um, like, you know, different parties throughout the year. So um, we do a Halloween party, we put on a gala, which will be happening this year, um, like for the first time since COVID, which will be nice. Um, we also do, there's a couple other social things we do. So there's like a lot of like big social engagements where we try to like bring classes together, but like your class is a good job too, of like making sure there's like a lot of like social time outside of school, which is nice. And like, even though 300 seems like a lot, I am I knew the majority of my class. Um, so it, it it gets small pretty fast. Thank you. Yeah, the big thing is just making sure you get out there and you do these events and don't let your schedule eat you alive because it will if you let it. So you have to go out and be like, I'm going to take this evening off and go hang out with these people. And that's how you will have fun and meet people. Next up, we have Alvaro. Hi, uh, yes, thanks. Um, so um, one of the reasons why I applied to Wayne State was like the impressive like commitment to diversity and inclusion for sure. And with what everybody has been saying and even the testimonials I've seen, I'm really excited for it despite being out of state. Um, but I was wondering if anybody could speak on um, kind of like, I know the, the mentorship you guys offer like for incoming first years. Um, I was wondering if anybody could speak on like whether they try to pair you with someone from a similar background as you. And um, if so, like, how has that experience been for you? And like, just overall, the how you feel as being a part of Wayne State and, you know, uh, I guess just like in general, if anybody could speak on that, I think, was it Elise who uh, said she was part of uh, the Latinx um, Association? Yeah, I am a member of the Latino Medical Students Association. And definitely, like, when you come in to Wayne, your mentors that you're given are not necessarily matched to your background. Um, and I actually find that really beneficial because they're usually from a different background and you can learn um, from their experiences and their differences. But if you're looking for a mentor that's been where you've been, done what you've done, um, definitely like organizations, like if you were to join LMSA, have mentorship opportunities for like Latinx students. Um, the BMA is going to have mentorship opportunities for our Black students. We have mentors from all backgrounds because Wayne has been here a long time and there's 300 people per class. Um, it's definitely available. Um, but I wouldn't say that Wayne matches you with someone from the bat. You, you, you're you going to have to seek it out, um, but it's really easy to find. Um, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I would say that was a that was a request that like students and like student government have been like requesting as well and working with like our um, Office of um, Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, which just changed its acronym to IDEA. Um, so I can't quite remember what that stands for. But um, and that was like something that we kind of requested as well, especially for like incoming students um, to kind of like have that available, like should students want that. Um, and again, we have a very, very extensive alumni network and a lot of like really great clinical faculty as well as basic science faculty. Um, so that's like something that they're actually um, working on in response to like students requests. So I, I hope that that is something that comes like very soon. But like Elise said too, if like you even if you went to our um, DEI office, like they they would absolutely work with you immediately to do that too. So like working to make it like a more official program, I think. Thank you can also Thank like, you. because we have so many cultural groups at Wayne, um, there's a lot of organizations for our, our really diverse student body. And so it's very likely that you'll be able to easily find like an M2 mentor and M3 mentor and M4 mentor, um, like a peer mentor that you can just join the same organization as and then get to know them through that. Um, so I would say we are not sure on mentorship. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, next up we have Robinson. 
Yeah, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, thanks uh, for all of you guys' input and insight. My question um, was more so in regards to uh, if anybody could touch on the opportunities you guys have in regards to like uh, public health, global health, like community health, um, and, you know, specifically working with underserved communities, like if, you know, anybody could just touch on um, how students could get involved in that, if there are like particular tracks for that, um, just anything that a student who's interested in, um, in that those sorts of things could get involved in. And I guess the second question, piggybacking off of that, um, I know you guys has have talked about you know getting your 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 uh, feet wet in terms of like knowing how to study when you first come into med school. Um, if anybody could also touch on how uh, maybe like M twos, how you guys like sift through all the different resources that uh, med students have. Um, I know this is like a really big class. Um, is there like students from like the previous class who have like created like a, not like a, a Wayne uh, study guide, but like, a, you know, every med school has their different curriculums and like students like just create things to make it easier so that people don't have like resource overload. So those were like the two kind of questions that I had. Yeah, is any, are any of the students on, I'm currently involved with Glue? No. Okay. So yeah, we have, you're like, you're, you're in the right place. Um, there are actually several opportunities in different ways to get involved with public health, global health, and just like community like alliance. Um, that's, there's, there's so many ways to engage with it, um, which is part of the reason, you know, why I came to Wayne State and like love Wayne State so much. Um, so we have like the um, um, global health alliance and I'm putting the, 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 uh, I'm pretty sure that's the um, link in the chat, um, but it's actually like a track kind of program that's led by one of our like fantastic um, like clinical doctors, Dr. Opara, um, and it kind of focuses on like global health and like if I, like facing inequities in medicine just you know across the world. Um, but then we have like ones that are like much more specific to home. Um, so we have like students who engage in public health and advocacy again either as like a scholarly concentration, as like an independent study, or working as like a group to kind of do to do that work. Um, and that is like, again, like it can be very formal as a track or like you can be working within a student organization to address like, you know, like food deserts or kind of like access to like food and nutrition or access to like healthcare. Um, so that can like look a lot of different ways, but um, students I wouldn't say are really good at like formalizing it to like address like their passions and their needs. So there's a lot of opportunities to do that here. Um, and we have like a lot of really, I think, remarkable um like leaders in that field like especially Dr. Opara is like you know renowned I think she was just at the White House like she is fantastic so you have like a lot of like really great faculty and leaders here that like lead these projects and kind of mentor students in that area um and I just kind of like is like do you want to be here in Detroit do you have a specific passion in Detroit that you want to focus on do you want to get that like formal track training through like the glue program um you can do all of that and there's a lot of opportunities to do that that are also um like, I don't think you have to like worry about like being so honed in on it now because like you'll have those opportunities presented to you when you come here and like reminded, you know, of how you can engage in those. Um, again, even if like you start doing street medicine in Detroit and you have a project that you want to work on, you know, within that population, you have that opportunity there. Yeah, for sure. And then to touch on the other half of the question there, yes, there are tons and tons and tons of resources handed down from each year to the next year. Um, right now, there is a giant spreadsheet document um, from our prior year. So now they're M3s, we're M2s, where they kind of had their lecture schedule and all of the resources plotted out for each lecture. So boards and beyond, on key cards, um, Pathoma, you're going to hear these names eventually over and over again, but they had them plotted out in the pages or the cards for each lecture. And then we would kind of edit them if anything changes, because year to year, the curriculum does change a little bit sometimes more, but each year we kind of pass those things down to each other. Um, sometimes there will be some free resources floating around, so we'll pass those down too. Um, but yeah, there's a very large resource bank of Wayne specific material for how our lectures are set up. And then we also, of course, help other students figure out how to use the other more broad resources, especially when you're getting more towards STEP. Um, but yeah, there's so many names floating around of different things that you can use to study. Um, 
that it can become overwhelming. In fact, I was one of those students that fell into that kind of in my first year and ended up just kind of buying into all of them and not using any of them. Very poor idea. You really want to try to test things out, see if you like them first before fully investing. And you don't want to use everything. You want to pick the ones like one to three that really work for your studying style and stick with those because using all of them is just going to be overwhelming. A lot of those resources that you'll hear people talk about, like Pathoma, Boards and Beyond, UWorld, all of that, honestly, I have found to be more of a second year issue because they're very step orientated. Whereas when you're a first year at Wayne, your faculty, all your exams are mostly faculty based. You're learning basic science. You're not learning how to diagnose and treat someone with a pulmonary embolism right away. That's the kind of stuff you have to deal with in second year. So I think it's very helpful to ask upper uh, your upper year classmen what they're using or what they used, ask other okay. students what they're using and kind of integrate that into your own study style. But really you're gonna be focusing on a lot of faculty stuff, especially in your first year. And then as you trickle into second year, you can get more insight into all those other programs, but definitely don't buy into them right away look into them first, see if they work for you, stuff like that. Because there are so many resources. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys both for those uh, thorough answers, appreciate it. Of course, so next we have Solomon. Hi, how's it going? Um, so I have two questions as well. One is about like out-of-state applicants, I mean, out-of-state students. I don't know if any are on the board, but how was like the transition from like moving from your hometown like to like the city of Detroit? And then my other question too is um, with like the housings or like learning communities, do you share those spaces like with um, upperclassmen as well? Or is it like just reserved to like your class? And if there's like opportunities to like meet people that are in different classes? Uh, I can speak on being an out-of-state student. Um, so I'm from Cleveland, it's not too far away. Um, but it definitely was an adjustment. I was born and raised here, went to college here. Um, I really liked Detroit and I was afraid at first just because I had never left home um, or left my city. But I really think that, uh, you know, I met a lot of out-of-state students. A lot of my friends are out-of-state students as well. Um, so I think there's kind of a commonality. Uh, you know, even though the class is predominantly from Michigan, since we're such a large class, there is a large group of people who are out of state as well, um, going through different things. Um, so I would say at first, it was definitely a little scary, but also exciting. Um, I love Detroit. I love how there, there's so many things going on in Detroit. Downtown's awesome. Um, Midtown's awesome. All of the neighborhoods are really cool. So it was a really great experience. I'm so glad that, that I'm here at Wayne. Um, and that I'm able to experience a new city. Uh, I definitely think the out-of-staters uh, go through similar things, um, issues, not knowing where anything is, um, but we all, you know, you can find a community in that as well. So um, it, it ended up being, uh, you know, actually a good thing because I, it, it's cool to learn a new city and, um, and be here. As far as the learning communities houses, um, you will be in your house for your all, all four years. So there's around 120 people per house then because there's going to be, do I do that math right? There's going to be 30 per, per class. And what happens is you'll have a coordinator. So I'm the coordinator for the yellow house and that coordinator will plan events for the entire house um, every single month. So whether it's a like meeting at a park and playing soccer or um, meeting in the study hall and just like studying and eating food together. Um, all four classes are invited. I will say that it's more common for first and second years to attend those events. Really, once we get into your third and fourth year, you're busy, you're doing your things, you've made your friends. Um, and so often third and fourth years don't come to those events, but they will always be in the houses. And the houses are a relatively new thing. They've been around, I think, for around five years now. And so they're still growing and we're actively working on ways that the houses can still um, involve third and fourth years, whether that's with like residency preparation, interview preparation, faculty mentorship, things like that. Um, but you'll always have that support from, from your community. 
Um, and if you're going to be in a small group, it's probably going to be with your, with your learning group. Gotcha. And in those spaces, are there like study rooms and stuff to like study for exams mm -hmm. and like practice things? So we, we don't actually have separate spaces. So the houses are a figurative house. <laughs> I know, that is a little confusing. Um, so it's more like we have the, the school shared for everyone um, and there's plenty of study spaces. Um, so you'll, you'll really run into people from all different houses in that way. The houses are more like those are the people that you're going to be assigned like small groups with that you're going to have activities with and that you're going to we even have like something called the olympics at the beginning of the year where like all the houses compete like that's who you're going to compete with and like they're kind of just like your team um but it's not necessarily a physical space or a study area it's more just like a figurative community. yeah gotcha that makes a lot of sense thank you both <laughs> appreciate it mm -hmm. All right, we have Samuel next. Hi everyone, my name is Sam. I'm also a Canadian, so hi to the Canadians out there. And thanks everyone for hosting the session. Um, my question relates to community inclusion and inclusion. I know that's a big part about Wayne State and it's been mentioned in a lot of the extracurricular and educational opportunities. Um, but really what I wanted to ask is if, if that mission or ethos, if it's present in just the informal student body? In other words, do you feel a sense of community and inclusion in the classroom with your peers, things like that? Yeah, I would say absolutely. absolutely. Um, and I think too, um, not to, um, <laughs> Not to get like too like oh like the numbers on it, but again like so we just like did like a big like evaluation of like all of our, our all of our students filled out a survey and stuff like that, um, and the like feeling like Wayne State is a is an inclusive place that values differences, values diversity, and is supportive of the those like di diverse needs or diverse backgrounds um, is something that students felt very strongly about, um, and that like was like one of the, one of our strengths. So I can say like just like from from the polling of of the student body, um, that seemed to be like the sentiment that was held, um, you know, especially within our student body, but also extending to like our administration and our faculty and um, as well, like the, the whole community seemed, you know, that that was the sentiment that was like brought forward by students. That was really one of our strengths um, and that like inclusion was, was very well felt. Um, and then speaking more like anecdotally, I think that, um, you know, working with like student senate and kind of like being a liaison to those needs, it does seem that, um, like the the school and the community is like very inclusive and um yeah I don't know what the other students like think but I, I think it's both like again like anecdotally like there's there's those like numbers that support that but I think being a student here I I really felt that yeah I agree you can you can really show up to the school at any time and find someone to study with um like I, I don't really feel like students here are competitive in any way we're very we're very collaborative we're just all getting through it together um and I think we all live that experience because of being asked to work together at, at all times, you know, like all of our, anything that we show up in person, we're working together. So that's a really easy way to just learn that like collaboration is really important and healthy and good. <laughs> um, and I think that Wayne really thrives on that, so. I will also say too that like students are a part of like all major like committees and um, I think that like the student voice is like really valued by like our administration and like our community so like when students bring forward like challenges or um, problems and like want to be a part of like creating solutions that positively impact students um, that is always prioritized which I think is a really good feeling and like you know a really also like again indicative of like a the, the nice like culture. All right. So as we are approaching with about five or six minutes left, we will keep taking questions, but I would ask at this time, we're probably gonna try to cut it down to one response per question and kind of keep them short because we wanna try to answer as many of these as we can for you guys. I know you guys have so many questions and just to throw it out there now before anyone might need to leave early, we will have more chats. There will be plenty of more online chats. If you guys didn't get a chance to get your questions answered, you can also email admissions or tons of other ways to reach out, but just letting you guys know ahead of time. So next up we have Will. Hi, thank you again for doing all this. It's very much appreciated. I was just kind of curious how you guys managed to kind of build a community with the intense medical school schedule with other students and kind of in the surrounding area. Can you say your question again, Will? 
how you guys found ways to kind of build like a community, like a network of, of people and support in the, um, in the area with the intense schedule. Yeah. So I think that we're all, like I said, we're all in it together. And so you form, you form friendships really close or really quickly because you're all going through a very big life change together. Um, I think that the biggest thing that you can do for yourself is to not isolate yourself. I think it can be really busy in all our stress to just think like, I got to sit down on my desk and I got to study. Um, and the biggest thing that I did for myself was realize like, oh, wait, everybody else is feeling the way I'm feeling. Let me go feel this with them, <laughs> you know? So I think that like, you do have to take a step for yourself and say like, I'm going to build this community for myself because that's going to be healthy for me. Um but it's once you do, once you reach out to people, it's really easy to just like click and spend time together and, and work through what you're doing together. As far as bonding with the community that we live in, with all the things that we can do here, all of our clinics, all of our extracurriculars, Wayne is really, really, really big about getting students out in the community. Um, and you'll meet people, people know Wayne, like people know Wayne here in Detroit and across the state and in the country. But when you show up at a community event and you say like, oh, I'm a Wayne State med student, they're so happy to have you and they, they'll tell you everything, <laughs> um, good and bad. Um, so like, it's really easy to, to connect with the community in that way too. So did I answer your question? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. right. Excellent, Rima. Hi everyone, thank you for taking the time to host this. Um, so one of my questions about global health was answered by Robinson's uh, questions, so thank you for that. I had a specific question for um, Bridget regarding basic science research. So um, how did you personally go about uh, finding the right mentor and the right field that interests you with like the plethora of options that Wayne State has? So I was personally part of the research elective for M1s. Um, so that elective starts during the second block of three months. So like around October. Um, and part of that elective involves uh, meeting with and kind of doing virtual, uh, virtual meet and greets with different faculty that we have at the school, basic science, clinical, translational. Um, and that's set up through the elective. So that's how I found um, my mentor. I went, I, uh, you know, through those meet and greets, I met a lot of different people. Um, different, uh, you know, areas of research as well, different departments. Um, and I just found a person who I thought, you know, we might mesh well and it ended up that we did. Um, so I've been working with them for almost a year, which is awesome. Um, I do know other people who just, uh, I think Laura might have mentioned that she was cold calling or, or cold emailing people. Um, so I know a lot of people do that as well. Uh, we have a lot of research going on here. Um, even if you just, you know, look through the faculty pages um, of different departments, a lot of them will list, um, you know, a bio of the of the faculty member and it'll have uh, their research interests. So I think there are a lot of different ways that you can get involved. Um, and we have a wide variety of people interested in studying different things as well. Awesome, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. So we are running out of time. I'm so sorry for the questions that we couldn't get to. Um, like I said, we will be hosting more events like this. So please, please feel free to join or you can email your questions, the admissions email that was put in the chat. And then also Dawn did bring up um, our MD ambassador program. We are working on setting up a Discord server so that you guys will be able to answer questions. We might even be able to host some question sessions on there with some of our students. And then that way you guys can look up RDS questions and get your answers that way so they don't have to be asked over and over. But um, yeah, uh, I think want to thank you guys all for showing up. Hopefully this was helpful. We love to see all your faces. Hopefully this gave you some good background on the kind of students here at Wayne and what we're all about and everything we do on a day to day. There's a lot going on in medical school. I'm sure you're aware. So um, please feel free to join any of our future sessions. We're planning some in October as well. So be on the lookout for that and for the discord coming up. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Hope you all have a nice day. Okay.
So I think you guys are, we're all good to go back to our studying if you like. Thank you so much though, fellow ambassadors. You guys were all great. Enjoyed your input so much. We love, we love doing this. And I've seen Elise so many times. I know she's on it. <laughs> I was just on the admissions website scrolling down to find, to make sure the email was posted on there. And there's a picture of Elise right here in her warrior <laughs> ambassador profile. <laughs> yeah, it's you oh, pointing the- to your white coat. You're like, <laughs> it says why you chose Wayne. Nice. Love that for me. <laughs> yes. If you guys need the link, if you want to be on the website too, I'll send you the link to the form. So you, can be, you too could be featured on our website. <laughs> oh, man. Perfect. <laughs> Thank right, you guys. all for participating. That was a great chat. I really appreciate you all. Yeah. All right, everyone. Enjoy your break. We really need it. I know I really need it. Yeah. <laughs> enjoy <laughs> this beautiful fall weather too. Fall really showed up yesterday. So, so sunny. I love it. All right. Have, Have a good day, everyone. Bye.